So Kentucky Indians and Kentucky Civics. I'm gonna finish up Kentucky uh, Indians right now. Clotter is wrong. How's Harrison and Clotter gonna tell us that there are no Indians or it was all hunting grounds, no permanent settlements when there are Indians everywhere? There are a million Indians. Indians are the ones that brought the white women into Kentucky. The Shawnee. The Wyandotte Warriors in March 1782 had the bloodiest Indian battle that happened in Kentucky. Captain James is still 25 men. They're caught up with the Raiders in a little mountain near the future site of Mount Sterling. Almost evenly matched the opponent's fault. The vicious battle. Captain James is still is encouraged by shouts from Monk. And Monk was one of the captured slaves. Captain James is still was killed after suffering at least three wounds and 13 of his men were killed or seriously wounded. The Wyandotte Indians had equally heavy losses but they remained in control of the battlefield and the engagement was considered to be an Indian victory. Monk escaped during the battle, a powerful five foot five inch man weighing 200 pounds. He carried one of the seriously wounded settlers nearly 25 miles to a still, a still station. A still son freed Monk who may have been the first slave freed in Kentucky. Monk! First slave freed in Kentucky. And only because they shot the master and killed him. So, uh, Monk, already known for maintaining an apple nursery at Boonesboro, later manufactured gunpowder for some of the stations. Still later, he became a Baptist preacher and he lived in Shelbyville. The main Indian invasion Alexander McKee and Simon Gurdy crossed the Ohio River with 50 rangers and 300 Indians. The Battle of Blue Licks. So Simon Gurdy was at Blue Licks. Alexander McKee and Simon Gurdy were at Blue Licks. Forty Americans at Blue Licks were probably killed in the first five minutes. And others were dying in hand-to-hand -hand fighting as the Indians attacked with knives and tomahawks. The settlers had made no provision to protect their horses when most of them dismounted after crossing the river. And the Indians were threatened to seize the, mount, seize the mounts. The raiders had about 10 men killed, 14 wounded. Some 60 settlers were killed and a few captured. It was the worst defeat ever. Daniel Boone said to have wept in later years whenever he talked about the disaster. He had to tell Rebecca another son's dead. Hugh McGarry was the bitch ass loser motherfucker that lost the battle of blue licks clotter you're smarter than this just clotter just because I decimated your first chapter if you didn't know the origins of Kentucky how am I supposed to assume you knew the rest of Kentucky just hunting grounds just some apologist white bullshit some white apologist bullshit I don't believe that for a second. There's genocide. Genocide happened here in Kentucky. So that's uh, Kentucky Indians. I want to talk about some civics now. So this is uh, mostly a civics, actually, video. I got a question here that I posed. What is the most powerful county official? Is it the county attorney, the county sheriff, the county judge executive, the PVA? or the constables. And this is uh, the counties in Kentucky. There's 120 counties in Kentucky and um, only Louisville, Lexington, maybe maybe some of the cities, northern cities, operate outside those bounds of the laws that have been set down by the state a long time ago, but the thing about Kentucky is that's who you are and what county you're from. So if you're, you know, if you're from Pike County, you're a Pike County in. From Johnson County, you're a Johnson County Knight, you know. Uh, but most, I don't know, there's 120. I don't know most of the counties. I can try to list a whole bunch. Robertson, Kenton, Boone, Owen, Carroll, Trimble, Oldham, Jefferson, Fayette, Trigg, Christian, Leslie, Harlan, Robert, did I say Robertson? <laughs> Martin County. So, um, who's the most powerful county official in the county? Who's the most powerful official? 
Is the sheriff the most powerful person in the county? Is it, uh, you know, somebody else? Is it uh, the, the sheriff, the judge executive, the uh, county attorney, uh, the PBA who collects the taxes, the constables who's also like the sheriff, only they're elected in their own districts? The duties of the Kentucky County Judge Executive is the ex officio chair of the fiscal court. So the judge executive has to sit on the chair of the fiscal court. So take Ken McFarland at uh, Gallatin County. He got he has to chair the uh, the court meetings, and he chairs the meetings. So he gets to dictate who speaks, who doesn't speak, and what term, what the agenda is. He gets a lot. Uh, the chair is actually like the man of the meeting, even though they're not the president, they're not anything else. They're just the one who runs that that room. Is the chair. So. They have a lot of power in terms of what is allowed to be brought up and what isn't. Um, they're also like the CEO of the county. They control all the budgets. They prepare an annual budget every year. The county budget may be amended by the fiscal court before it's sent to the state and local finance officer. The CEO of the county controls all the administration over activities of all the agencies created by the fiscal court. So all the secretaries and any of the agencies the fiscal court creates. The County Alcoholic Beverage Administrator um, is also the judge executive, so he gets to administer the alcohol beverages as the county judge's jobs. County judge also is uh, the spoil system. He gets to appoint all non-elective administrative officers to the county and members of numerous statutory county boards and commissions. So the fair board, uh, the fair board, I guess theoretically speaking, the county judge could uh, pick who they want to be representing the fair board and any of the other commissions and boards that a county has. The judge's executive is the fucking man, okay, when it comes to the legislation and the executive. So when it comes to the policy and the rules of the road, um, the, uh, I guess, the culture of the county, well, any new laws or new provisions that are brought up is by the legislator has to be signed by the executive, and the executive is the ones that put it into motion. They're the ones that sign it, and they say this is now a law. And then they are make sure that people enforce the law. So Gallatin County, since we're talking about Ken McFarland, say Ken McFarland passes a law that everybody has to wear a blue hat. Okay? Everybody has to wear a blue hat. He passes that law. He's the one that has to enforce it once that law is passed. And he has to get all the cops and everybody else on board. The legislation passes it, and he signed it. It's law. And they can throw you in jail for some shit like that if they just want to do it at a whim. So... Um, the county judge has a spoil system, like I said. He, that's where he gets a lot of his power because he can make appointments. Since he can make appointments to these boards, um, that's patronage. That's uh, you do for me, I do for you. You know, you vote for me, I'll give you your job. I remember McFarland saying that all the people that's going to keep their jobs. So that had to be a promise that he had made. Yeah, you guys must all keep your jobs. Unfortunately, he should have been more independent. Uh, the head of the beast was chopped off, but the body was still in place. Right. Um, with actually both the uh, Josh Neal and Ken McFarland revolution, there was a that was a revolution in Gap County. That was a fun revolution. The elections do make a difference, and policy can change. Um, you got a new sheriff in town. The sheriff become the water council or the uh, city councilman. He's a good ass city councilman too. So that was exciting to see. Josh Neal's an exciting person to uh, to watch. Uh, Ken McFarland, I'm disappointed with. <clears throat> he appoints county representatives on all county and city boards. So even if he couldn't control, I don't know, fair board might be something different, but I, I swear it says he appoints all non elective administrative officers. Fair board's non elected administrative officer. So the county judge can elect a fair board, it can, you know, the library board. The county judge can choose all those positions. He can hire or fire any of them as he pleases, at will. He also can be a member of any of the boards or committees if he wants to be. Um, uh, I asked a question. There's a person that said, I'm surprised the coroner is not listed as a choice. And that's a good point. The coroner has some power, too. The coroner is the only person that can investigate the sheriff. So say the sheriff becomes corrupt. Say Josh Neal becomes corrupt and does a heinous deed. The only person that can arrest Josh Neal would be... Um, whoever the corner of Gallatin County is. Jack Hughes? Only Jack Hughes, I think. I don't know, he's been corner forever. 
I don't know why he wouldn't be. They, we reelect, you know, all these Mubarak people anyways. Mitch McConnell's been in there for 28 years. Royce Adams was in there for 30-something years. So it says, uh, a coroner's not listed. A, a coroner's a governor official who investigates human death. So uh, the coroner can do this with any murders. But if the sheriff murders somebody, then the coroner can open up a case on the sheriff. He determines the cause of death. He, deter he issues the death certificates. He maintains the death records. The coroner's all about death. You know, dead, dead, dead. The coroner's about being the dead. He responds to deaths in a mass disaster. He identifies the unknown dead. He gets them identified. Um, also, the sheriff and three other elected county officials, coroners, jailers, and constables are peace officers possessing law enforcement powers. These powers include a broad grant of authority to make arrests under the authority of KRS 431-005. Any peace officer may make an arrest. So, that's constables, jailers, coroners, and the sheriff. All four of those people can make arrests. Jailers, constables, coroners, and the sheriff. Sheriff, coroners, jailers, and constables. And I guess anybody in their administration, I'm not sure how the sheriff can hire people to arrest other people. The sheriff's deputies, according to the law, they don't have their power of arrest. The sheriff does. But they're trying to say the sheriff has an umbrella, so therefore it's the sheriff's men. Um, should have, you know, uh, the ability to arrest people. But interesting, it's good that Kentucky has 120 counties because it makes it more democratic. There's more uh, power to the people in Kentucky because there's 120 counties. Also, like it because of all the divisions in it. So you have, you know, the county sheriff, uh, the county sheriff, and you also have the county police, and you got the city police. And then you got the state boys, and then you got the feds. So, in the county, the sheriff is the man, but the uh, judge executive and the fiscal court can make the county police pretty powerful uh, position. I'm not sure how the sheriff and the county police interact with each other if the sheriff tries to take over the county police's domain, but the county police is its own jurisdiction. It's got its own thing. The sheriff has got its own thing, too. So, or the arrest powers, several people have the arrest powers. You have... The sheriff has arrest power, the coroner, the constables, constables, which is kind of surprising, but they do have, they're like the sheriffs of their district. So the sheriff is, gets a rule over the entire county. Whenever there's any type of uh, violent outbreak or any type of uh, riot or uh, domestic violence or a shooting, it's the, it's the sheriff that can go in there and put hands on people and make people do this, do this. Hey, I'm the sheriff in town, so you need to, you know, do as the fuck as I say because I'm the fucking sheriff. So whenever there's a crisis, the sheriff's the man. Um, also with the constables, these are elected positions, so I think these are also good things. Constables are trying to do away with constables in Frankfurt, uh, which is some bullshit. If you're a constable, you should be pissed off about that, because they're trying to do away with your job. They're saying you are useless and you don't deserve to have a fucking job. Uh, but I like constables because they're like little sheriffs. Why do we have all this elite? county police and the judge and all these people making the decisions when we the people should decide who we want to police amongst us. And we want a sheriff and we want constables. And we want the sheriff and the constables to be elected by us, we the people. We want these positions to be elected. We're tired of these behind the scenes, behind, you know, uh, closed doors type of fucking patronage spoil system. That's how the county judge has all his power. But that's how everybody does everything everywhere patient is spoil system behind back you know behind back doors and shit some bullshit coroners jailers and constables and the sheriff they're all peace officers so they're there to keep the peace um, they can uh, make an arrest in obedience to a warrant without a warrant when a felony is committed in his presence without a warrant when he has probable cause to believe the person arrested has committed a felony Without a warrant, with a misdemeanor, as defined by KRS 431060, has been committed in his presence. Without a warrant, with harassment, criminal trespass, in the third degree, and certain traffic violations are committed in his presence, or if he's got probable cause to believe that a person is driving under the influence of alcohol or any substance which may impair his driving ability. So the jailer can arrest you for drinking and driving. The coroner can arrest you for drinking and driving. The constables can arrest you for drinking and driving in the state of Kentucky. In the counties, all 120 counties, 
you can be arrested by the jailer and the coroner, the constable. Not just drinking and driving for any range of crimes. Disorderly conduct, jaywalking, it doesn't even matter. They're arresting motherfuckers here in Louisville for jaywalking, and it's a alleged jaywalking. They don't, you're allowed to cross in some intersections that don't have a stoplight on it. Actually, all intersections you're allowed to cross that don't have a stoplight on it. Read your Kentucky, uh, Kentucky's driver's